Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Bag Holder Pod. For this episode, uh, we have something that is rather close to home because this is mostly uh, related to us. Lah. In one session with PM Lawrence Wong, there was a then uh, someone asked whether influencers should be regulated or not. So they cited Seth's name, Don's name, I just try la, and another girl named Vanessa. They say that uh, they are mostly unregulated and unlicensed, but they are still giving a bit of financial advice online. La. So the question is whether should influencers like us uh, be regulated or not in Singapore. So Punti, what do you think? I'm just thinking how come when the list of names was brought out, right? How come your name is, is not there? It was a Sing Saver campaign uh, where it was a mouse versus cashback credit card campaign. All four of them were team captains. They were two on mouse side, two on them on cashback side. Uh, so I wasn't <laughs> in there. So my name wasn't cited. Uh. He was asking whether these people pose a systemic risk to Singapore's I don't know, financial industry or not. Uh. And Lawrence Wong, he, re- he said that like, even if he can block or license everyone in Singapore, he can't firewall people. Uh. So basically, it's hard to regulate people because uh, Singaporeans will just go elsewhere to look for unsolicited financial advice. Uh. So I think it depends on the type of content created because although we all frame like, oh, these are like one big family of influencers, but if you look into the details, Everyone talk different things. Everyone have their own style. Some are really, you know, like giving, it's not even advice, you know, it's just like sharing knowledge, um, those kind of things. Like, like those kind of information, you can even read it on Wikipedia. You know, it's like very generic kind of things. You can't be saying that this kind of, you know, like sharing is also need to be regulated because it is really like just educations, right? But there's also, you know, like small group of influencers that is really kind of like dangerous whereby they just outright push a certain product, certain investment, sometimes even certain scams, right? So if you say this whole area shouldn't be uh, regulated, I think it's also quite dangerous uh, because sometimes it's not so easy to draw west the line. Uh. So I think what, what um, from the perspective of the regulators, I think they are most afraid of this kind of scammy uh, behavior or sometimes some advice that lead to people losing you know, huge sum of money, which then affect their retirement. Imagine that if there's a big group of people being affected by this kind of uh, activities, right? And their retirement may be destroyed, may be, you know, hugely affected. So for sure, they will complain to the governments to do something about it, right? So I can see the point that, yes, sh- we, we should have some sort of regulations, but it's mainly to, you know, avoid this kind of like scammy behavior rather than just one regulations at- that apply to everyone, every uh, influencer. So I think that's a bit extreme now. Like for example, you know, uh, there's this mention about, uh, I think Malaysia said they have, um, like they, they require influencers to take some exams, right? I, I don't know whether that is really helpful. Maybe it's helpful in terms of like, pushing up the basic uh, understanding of finance, but to make people behave responsibly, I think, I, I don't know. Because, you know, there's always money on the table, right? For those who promote certain products and so on. Yeah, I'm quite curious to hear what Eric say on this. This part, I actually quite agree with uh, PM. Because it's saying like, there's so much info online. How are you going to like, stop everyone from going online to, to listen to all those opinions? You can't, right? There's, there's no way. But I think, um, I don't know, maybe when you reach a critical mass, and you can reach a certain number of people, you have a massive reach, a big subscriber base, then maybe we should look into it. <laughs> yeah. Like certain button, right? Yeah, certain, maybe certain buttons that you have, then yeah, maybe the government can, can look into it. <laughs> no, but that is such a high bar. Like in Singapore, there's, there's only a handful of people who only have this, button that you are talking about like Aiden Ku, uh, was it Rainer Dio? Uh, also, also me la. but the rest are all quite small so it, I don't think that's, a, that's the correct benchmark to use um, but rather like for Malaysia right to even work with any sponsors like uh, recently Mumu went into Malaysia then Rakuten Trade to even work with, with them you need to have this uh, the, the license which Mundi called, mentioned. Uh, so it's called uh, uh, Market Representative License, which I actually took. Uh, so it's 
a bit like those driving license where you know it's very logical kind of scenario like uh, should you promote should you give financial advice or then the answer is no they're just curious like do, do they tell you like oh you cannot do certain kind of things for example like promote let's say crypto did they explicitly explicitly say that you cannot promote crypto for example? no they just say like you can't give financial advice law yeah but then, then question is, is what is financial advice, advice right correct, because correct. you can always say that oh i'm just um i, I discovered this crypto abc for example and i think uh there's a I, I think this crypto have future for example right then someone go and buy it then is that considered fi financial advice and also they don't go into specific details like this even in their latest guideline <laughs> even the guideline was very weak law, so it's not not nothing specific nothing too specific like when we talk about influencer i guess the us side has the biggest influencer like the graham stephan meet kevin that kind right so a while back they actually got into some trouble because they were promoting some uh, sponsors like, like FTX, uh, which back at the time I was also doing it also. But, but mine was, wasn't really sponsored. Like I, was, I was doing it because FTX was the, I think, first or second largest crypto exchange. And back then, Binance was at the top. Singapore sort of banned Binance. So the next best exchange was FTS. So that time I thought about, okay, so you can use FTS. Turns out FTS was stealing people money. So I think everyone, a lot of people got burned up. The other one that I thought about was hold not. But that one was using it myself, ma, which I also added a disclaimer. I said, oh, only if you were okay with the risk of staking your crypto, then you only use it. So now I know that like, talking about all these things, right, were, it was very risky. La, so, Right now, I already refrain from doing all these things. Even for U the US side, right? Uh, the Graham Stephan, he kena the this thing called Yota Bank, where you put money into it. Uh, instead of giving you interest, you are participating in some sort of a lottery kind of thing. La. But right now, this Yota Bank, turns out it's not actually a real bank, but it's just another fintech company. La. So now, a lot of people, money got stuck in there, then Graham Stephan, he's a reputation got hit a second time. Now. These are the things. Now. So like initially you felt that you feel that you weren't promoting a scam. But like two, three years later, it turns out to be a scam. So it seems that most of the scam has to do with like a if it's too good to be true kind of thing. Like the crypto, I don't know, it's like a yield farming, a kind of too good to be true. So you'll find that like uh maybe 8% you, is it too good to be true? 10%? Then where do we draw the line? Actually, if you think about it, if you look into it, right, uh, the only ones that uh, crashed during the crypto winter time, right, it was all the CFI, the centralized finance platforms. So places like the DeFi stuff, right, like uh, Uniswap, all of them were fine. And the interesting thing is that a lot of places right now are still surviving. Like USDT, right now it's giving about 4% yield at DeFi places. La. Even DBS is coming out with their own yield farming thing also. <laughs> so is it a scam? Actually, not really. It's the platform that is scamming people. Then, But then how do you know which is the scammy platform? La? So the safe place would be either like DBS or regulated platforms like by MAS. But but then crypto platforms weren't really regulated by MAS also. Ma. Anything that's crypto is... Straight away, you can't, I can't talk about it. La. So, okay, so the crypto is one side already. That's already done deal. I think right now, none of the influence dare to talk about it anymore. Then the other one is like those unregulated platforms by MAS. By the, but it's actually legit platform elsewhere. La. But I saw a few lifestyle influencers talking about it. So this is the other thing also, right? Uh, some other places are regulated, but in Singapore, it's unregulated. Then what about like just stocks, right? Because I think we also talk about like stock investment quite frequently, like specific companies. Sometimes if not even uh, single companies, like we just talk about S&P 500. And then we just talk about like, okay, there's a hundred years uh, bull run on this entire index. And then we talk as if like this is the, the right way to invest. And then someone going back 200K in and then the market drop. 20%, right? So people lose money, right? So, and, and then if the person complained that, oh, you see, I'm taking um, investment advice from Kelvin, from Eric, from the backholders pot. So it's quite hard for us to defend also, right? Because uh, 
yet we are talking among four of us here, but sometimes people like uh, misunderstood it as financial advice. But it is clearly not uh, investment uh, advice because we don't know the person, right? We didn't say go and buy this. You should buy this. We didn't. We didn't say these kind of words. But still, we are we are highlighting or say I try to argue that this is a good investment. I would rather do this, for example, right? Then people follow. So I really really curious like where to draw the lines. Uh. Will it be a problem if someone report us? <laughs> this there was a fun story like from there was there was a Malaysia influencer like, which I talk regularly with. A while back, he was talking about a certain stock online. Uh, he said, oh, this stock has good growth. Uh, then he showed the stats like, and, stock, and so on. Someone actually um, go and report him to the malicious MAS something. Then the video got taken down. So even though he wasn't really recommending the stock, he just said, oh, this stock has good growth. Just by, and he's just showing the facts. So for us, like SMB, we can say like, SMB has good historical growth. It gives 10% average returns. Can also still can like, if you don't add any like, disclaimer because people say, oh, I'm re nearing my, reti my retirement and SMB going to crash 50%. My retirement, my retirement money gone. So the correct way for him to invest should have been like maybe dividend stocks or bonds, that, that kind of thing. Bonds or dividend stocks would be a bad investment for young investors. Ma. So it's very hard to give very... Uh, specific advice to everyone that's why we can only say oh we think this is a good stock but only for certain people yeah so don't know how to like give this kind of disclaimer every time right i think the stock recommendation you only get into trouble if you somehow benefit of it like if you're if we are just talking about nvidia like it's 10 bagger or whatever 1000 bagger we're just talking about ourselves right we can we can talk like pie in the sky and everything like people want to listen, they want to go and do silly things. It's up to them because if you go and find trouble with backholders, say, oh, because Bunti keep on showing us to buy NVIDIA. Like, no, he doesn't stand to benefit anything. Right? He's just talking about his own investment. But this, is, like but this is not true for small cap though because small cap are sometimes, you know, there are people who keep on pumping the stocks, right? And they really benefit from it. And, and the problem I have is that it's sometimes hard to draw the line. That's the problem. It's very easy to draw a line. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're talking about those very, very illiquid stock, then yeah, small cap even, illiquid. Even those are uh, you can catch. You can catch. Yeah, because previously I was a stockbroker, ma, so they know how to catch, right? They can see who's trading in and out. Yeah. Let's say you you buy a lot of this illiquid stock, right? And then after that you go and like buy sell to your friend and everything, right? You just go and chow na ku, uh, like literally fry it up like a few bits and then you release to your client and say, oh, uh, wow, this stock, I think, watch it. Then after that next few days, you and your friend, you all got huge trading limit, right? So you just sell to him, buy to him, then like a few thousand dollars you earn, but he lose, then you pay him back, lah, like this kind of thing. And then after that, it is like called insider trading or something. Ah. Then you just tell to people, hey, this stock promising, blah, 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 things like that. Yeah. These are illegal, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Then the, the authorities can go and find out that, hey, how come always these three fellas trading among themselves and then the, the price keep going higher and higher systematically every day? Like, I think you all are aware of this, uh, the three famous stock, right? Blue Dumont. And, and all this. Yeah, the three stock every day go up by like one bit, two bit kind of thing. For, don't know, like two years or something. <laughs> so it's like, you buy now, power what one. So it's like, hey, buy lah, buy lah. So this kind of thing is illegal because you yeah. can trace liquid so no worries about that but i'm talking about if it's a uh, those kind of very liquid mm. blue chip like nvidia who can move the stock no one can right it's so huge uh but i think the the issue here is right circling back to the start uh when should we regulate the influencers when when then they will pose a issue because you know that stockbrokers uh insurance people right when they give financial advice, they are trained. They, they, they take exams, they study and all that. But for influencers, they may not go through the same rigorous exams. So they may not have the so-called the basic knowledge to dish out this kind of advice. And yet they do it. And some of them, they even charge for it. Like it's private kind of thing. Like I think Patreon or whatever. not. So there are people who do that on the site. I, I mean, it's not just patreon right i think there are other platforms also 
that allows you to pay like tip the the person that's sharing some spreadsheet or whatnot lah. then these are the things i think is very tangible right you ask people hey you pay me like a hundred dollars for a one-to-one -one consult so i look through all your financials and then i advise you there is like directly stealing the fun one of the financial advisor so that part i think it steps a little bit over the line because your content creator is not supposed to you know you you go into financial advisory because there's a what do you call it fiduciary duty or whatever not to your clients eh? which can you take that responsibility i think the answer is very clear no so in, no matter what you say right you say oh uh this is just for entertainment or whatnot but you ask people to pay you then there will be a you need to take a responsibility you know you know what i'm trying to say it's a bit different from what we do here ma. like we never ask hey you, you guys pay us 50 dollars listen to one episode like nobody nobody does that one so it's just we are talking they listen for entertainment that's about it so i think when you cross a line uh, and you ask people to pay you for advice financial advice uh that is something that i think maybe worth looking into lah but i don't know how how easy is it to implement like like kelvin say right if let's say you only got like a few thousand subs your reach is not that big yet uh but you can still have a very meaningful income leh. like for example like just 200 people they pay you for one-to-one -one. you can also get a fairly decent income ready so i don't know how are you going to regulate those very small creators and then what is the procedure like how do we enforce it <laughs> and then how about those overseas one what are you going to do <laughs> they zoom call you lor. you pay me <laughs> on paypal and then i zoom call you ah, those all very gray area uh so i'm also not very sure how you can regulate that lah. i think that's the regulations right then i also think that there's there's a flip side to it also like if you have too much all these regulations saying this you cannot do that you cannot do and then what happened to the this entire content creation space is that there will be a lot less conversations discussion content related to financials and and i, I just met a, a friend he shared with me like oh he also watched uh adam cool's video and then uh, uh mr Lu's video and then they they also try to you know absorb all these informations and then like try to think about all these things you know it could be someone who's like working for 10 years already never really put the time to increase the you know like learn about the financials now like there's all this content that create uh, created and then there's uh, at least discussion conversations that's ongoing right and then also mr lu and adam ku they can they can freely speak about all these you know financial topics become a financial influencer because the government is like kind of like relaxed about it imagine that every time like some words is being said right for example like oh you talk about smp 500 then gonna <laughs> gonna call from mas so if in that kind of situation who will give any like create any content related to financials right so i think net net right all these uh content cre creations because I'm, I'm also part of it now it's really like to the benefits of the entire societies uh, rather than uh you know like negatives uh. i I'm, I'm sure that there will be people who get you know the bad kind of content and then do the wrong stuff and lose money but i, I think net net in aggregate in aggregate is still still a plus uh. yeah yeah i agree right now it's uh still a plus at least for the film influencer singapore film influencer space uh, because they know that what line they, they know there's a line but they don't know exactly where they know that okay we should not go near that dark area <laughs> uh so that's at least for the film influencer side the livestock influencers side, many of them have stepped through <laughs> that line already so they were also a bit um okay this is but what, now, what do you mean what do you mean step through what line so they, just like i mentioned about those unregulated um platforms in singapore some some are regulated some are unregulated then there's also like copy trading forex trading some of those platforms are not regulated in singapore so once in a while you see those lifestyle influencers talking about it oh use this platform and by the way this is not financial advice oh <laughs> oh and then they add on oh you will get up if you sign up you'll get some free gifts oh 
none of the film influencer dare to talk about it, even though it's a, actually a film influencer side kind of uh, product. La, you know? But just now, Eric talked about this um, uh, financial advisor. Even if even they are even if they are licensed, right, and they have the fiduciary duty to help the their clients, right? If you go online to see those Reddit threads, a lot of them are actually giving very weird, very doubtful advice. Like, oh, you you buy this uh, endowment plan, you buy this ILP, you buy this mutual fund. Uh, they will give you good returns based based on because historical. Oh, you see all these numbers. Then turns out. Either they are either losing money or not making money at all. I'm just saying like even if you license them, right, they can still give super bad advice, maybe worse than unlicensed uh influencers. Because that because there's no one reporting them. Uh. So so like at least for film influencer, you are uh sort of washed by everyone. So if someone don't like you, out of that 10,000 view, 20,000 view, someone go and report to MS, then you are that video is GG already. But for FA, financial advisor, you go and sell one ILP to one uncle, the uncle go gong gong, buy it. 10 years later, he only realized that, oh, it's a bad product. So you can actually get away with it. Being licensed doesn't mean that you can avoid giving out bad advice. Lah. Yeah, Eric. Oh, yeah. Just, just now you were sharing, right? Those licensed ones give very dubious advice. I just want to share one incident that I, I had with my wife, right? Because... Uh, that time we were married like two three years then we were thinking of buying a, a savings plan for my son so we went down to the bank uh, i don't want to say what bank uh, but later i'll tell you all went down to the bank so she made me go with her she said you understand the jargon because she cannot like coco cheated before by another bank so he said this bank uh you come with me so you listen so that he won't cheat me i only want a savings plan don't I don't want to buy all those uh, investment link, all those nonsense. Just savings, okay? Just savings. So I said, okay, good. Okay, I understand. So we went there. We were very, very sure. We said, okay, just savings. Okay, we, we want a uh, capital guarantee. Uh, Wun Wun one. <laughs> don't want investment at all. Then the person said, oh, no, no investment one. So he outright agreed to everything we say. Then he sell us this plan, right? So, ah, okay. So you buy this plan, you can take out like after three years and whatnot, lah, promise us the sky and everything. Say until very sweet, you know, draw diagram some more on the piece of paper. So I listen to you, I say, hey, okay. Le. Then my wife looked at me, okay or not? Then I say, hey, okay, la, no then I say, okay, no problem. Then asking capital guarantee, right? Then he said, yeah, yeah, no problem. Capital guarantee that you won't lose money. Man. Then I say, okay, la. then let's do it. Then let's buy. So we sign the thing, right? After he signed already, uh, a couple of years later, right, the my wife's agent looking through all her policy, then he looked at this and say, This one, where do you buy it from? Uh? So he said, Oh, we bought it from the bank. No worries, this one's savings. Then he looked at us like, like we are idiots. Uh. You, you, you really think this is savings, man? Eh? Then he told us all the all the fine prints. Uh. He told us how it works, this and that. Uh. Then he said, you may not get back your principal. No, it's not capital guaranteed. Like. And then you cannot take out for like 10 years. Eh. So you only pay premium for five, but you can only take out at 10 years. If not, uh, you risk run the risk of suffering the the some impairment. Uh. Mm. You early surrender. So so I was I was telling my wife, hey, cannot be what the time we went there, they confirm say it's capital guarantee. But anyway, huh, we realized something. We realized that if you buy such products from the bank, right, the person who sell you are most likely within one or two years, rotate out already. Put in that place now. So, you go back to the bank, you, you say, hey, how come you guys sell me this? Huh? They say, who? Who? Who sell you? The person is confirmed no longer there. So, so how? <laughs> you go yeah, there. The, the bank's still <laughs> responsible. Huh? But what, what plan is that? Is that insurance plan? Like capital yeah. guaranteed uh open maturity only, right? Yeah, I not at any time, right? I, I have no idea what is that plan actually called, eh? but supposedly uh it is a insurance is a insurance plan, is not like a, those kind of savings plan, which we were asking for. Like women, yeah, those kind of like you know, like similar to fixed D kind, uh similar to those kind. Uh, what is what is saving plan? <laughs> Actually, I also don't know. I, I thought it's those kind of like you save, 
uh, for a certain number of years, then they after that they will give you like a lump sum payout or whatnot. It could There's be such thing one. <laughs> Maybe it's called an endowment. Yeah, but endowment, like endowment is still it's still insurance, ah. It's still yeah, insurance. It's insurance is insurance. But yeah. uh, endowment, I I believe should be capital guarantee, right? If you hold till maturity, lah. Yeah, usually the capital guarantee is also only applicable till maturity, one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. anyway, he was telling us the the person nah, that time when we asked, he said that what well, can you can uh surrender five years or whatnot. It's still okay, man. I still will turn whatever percentage lah. He was telling telling us. So I think he outright he outright tell us fake news ah, yeah that. But we go back to the bank, we cannot find him anymore, because they rotate very fast ah. I think one two years they are gone already. So Su Tui Zhen ah, I mean, now I say he say like that, but there's no one there already. Then you ask the bank take responsibility. They say, "What responsibility? This one is you sign." But, but let's say if you just read through the documents or all, all those things, it's really like you find out. Okay, it's true. You signed to something that you didn't understand before, right? Uh, actually, ah, uh, to be honest, right, we uh, really too too much fine print to read through. Really. Like you ask me to read through like twenty pages of fine print, I just I just ask the person. It verbally, because I didn't expect the person will tell me lies, man. Like really, that he really, literally, just tell a lie, directly. So I like okay, lor. Wow. So next time we we know that cannot we cannot buy this insurance product from banks because the agent will not be there. Confirm I think the that. agent not be there. That's not a uh, an excuse actually, because you can still report to regulator MS. They will still take action on this one. It's it's a mis-selling situations. So, uh, the the bank they are still responsible. Hey, then how do we prove it? Ah, uh? how do we prove that person tell us the product is what is, but it's not? Yeah, you have to prove it, lah. Uh. Yeah, lah. Then cannot prove what like Su Tui Zhen like can lock a complaint. Ah, huh? lock lock a complaint to customer service. See what they say, lah. Uh. Ah uh, yeah, I mean because from I, from from those who sell it right, they they are their concerns. Their biggest concern is mostly reputation. You write a complaint. You say that you you currently like you miss selling me this two years ago. Now I'm complaining. It, worst come to worst, you just report to you know you just voice it here at back holder, and then maybe, uh you know like those newspaper pick it up, then it circulate. So it become like a reputation hit, right? So they they might also take action on on these kind of things. Maybe next time we are as big as Kelvin got button, they will take action. <laughs> Now you like ah yeah, they like ah whatever lah. <laughs> okay, anyway, that was my story. But I know that Singapore, the the MAS, they are trying to come up with something to regulate influencer lah, and this is not a new thing already. So like just now you mentioned, Malaysia side has already started regulating. The other side is Australia also. They also started regulating. So Singapore, I guess, is coming out soon. Really, it's within this one to two years. Really, I would that hundred percent support this kind of regulation. Lah. So, for me, I've learned this the the hard way, which is not to promote certain dubious stuff. And obviously, some of people who followed me got burned. Lah. But with this kind of uh regulation, I guess a lot of problems can be removed. Really, uh, whether it's grey line or not. When when this regulation come out, you can report people who are giving out all these dubious advice. Ah, so it's a win win for everyone. Ah, and I doubt that Singapore is going to go with very hard into this because personally, I've also gonna indirectly lah gonna something from AMS. Is that oh this part is a bit a bit weird ah take down. <laughs> so this so this kind of thing now so now I know like okay what can I do what can I do kind of thing and 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 I only learn it the hard way lah. So these are the stuff that I would want to hundred percent avoid talking about altogether. I mean, talking about those dubious schemes altogether, lah. What do you consider is like dubious? So okay, so first of all, like crypto is definitely out already. Like last time, I still think that oh okay, learn investing, ma. Can we learn investing <laughs> so I can go and learn about crypto, talk about crypto? But now, like okay, even if I talk about it, then okay, at a hundred thousand subscribers. Not not that I want to hold it or anything. At hundred thousand su subscribers, this name carries a weight to it, leh. Even at like twenty thousand subscribers, it also carries a name to it. So like for example, chicken, twenty thousand is 
people will say, wow, a lot of people listen to him. Leh. He buy Baba, Baba. <laughs> Is his Baba called uh, real or not? And someone he's working for Aiden Ku, uh, another big name. Leh. His name, even at 20,000, already carries a big weight to it. Leh. So <clears throat> when you talk about Baba, so okay, I know that Chicken is not uh he's not towing the line. Leh. He he's just providing his own stuff, right? But when people listen to him, what he say, oh, Chicken say Baba. He's buying Baba le. Aiden could trust him le. <laughs> so, so maybe I can trust him also. And in the end, he buy. They buy and they lose money. They say, come and blame chicken. When, when all these are regulated, it's easier to, to work as an influencer also. Because, yeah, you know what to do, what not to do. That'll be easier to do. La. I mean, like you, you say that regulation is a good thing. What do you think? How do you think they will regulate you? It's very likely it's similar to the Malaysia way, where to if you want to even step into this industry and work with any partner like Mumu, Weibo, all this, you have to be, you have to have a certain license lah. So that's the first steps, uh, which means that all the all the Tom, Dick, and Harry, they, <laughs> there's a barrier of entry already. Uh, they can't just go and start a YouTube channel and uh, and expect to work lah because. They need to pass this initial. It's like it's like a driving test, lah. In order to drive, you need to learn how to drive. So, to conclude today's episode, please continue to support our biggest influencer here in Singapore, <laughs> Kelvin Learn Investing. <laughs> yeah, there's. If he say anything wrong, please also help to report him so that he know what to what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Please remember to like and share the video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.